Hello, darlings, and welcome to another story build on my channel. It's been a long time since we've done one of these. I absolutely love these because who doesn't... Well, for me personally, I love a good ghost story. I love a good Sims 4 speed build. So why not mix the two together? And that is what you get with a story build. Um, Yes, we're going to be talking about a place in Northern England called Chillingham Castle. Um, it's a beautiful medieval castle. I'll go over a bit more of the history in just a second. But um, yeah, I'm going to try and bring out a story build every single month, especially leading up towards Halloween. Um, very excited for Halloween. Get ready for some spooky builds in October, my friends. Um, what we're going to do today, I'm going to go over in a minute. and We're just going to go and talk about the history of the build a little bit. A few of the sightings, ghost sightings, that being... And then we're going to go into the speed build and I'm going to read through the history even some more like as the speed build is going on. You'll see me on camera um, and we'll go over a little bit more of the history of the place and some of the scary stories that this place entailed. Um, so trigger warning for anybody that doesn't enjoy. Well, nobody enjoys listening to stories about torture, but just so you know, this might get a little bit um, horrible in the descriptions of what went up down in this place but anyway without further ado let's flop on over and i'll tell you a little bit more about chillingham castle chillingham castle was a 12th century stronghold that became a fully fortified castle in 1344 and is owned by the same family to this very day chillingham castle is located in the northern part of northumberland in england the castle was in a strategically important position on the border of two feuding nations, Scotland and England. The castle has a huge history of torture, persecution and the paranormal, which has resulted in Chillingham Castle being named one of the most haunted places in the UK. There are many ghosts residing in Chillingham Castle and the castle has a huge history of disturbing and horrifying events. The Grey Lady, Blue Boy and John Sage are just some of the reported resident ghosts. John Sage is among the most infamous people from Chillingham Castle. He was a sadistic torturer that took great pride in his work. More than 7,500 victims were tortured to death in the three years that he worked in the castle. Scottish prisoners that were held in the castle suffered horrible deaths in the hand of this sadistic man. He burned adults and older children alive in the castle's courtyard and also butchered younger children with an axe in the Edward room. Some people report the room having a foul smell and also seeing the chandelier in this photo swinging by itself. The axe is on display in the castle to this very day. The Blue Boy, Chillingham's most famous ghost, is said to haunt a room in the castle known as the Pink Bedroom. Screams of terror from a young child could be heard coming from that room when the clock strikes midnight. After, the sounds would stop, an apparition of a boy in blue would appear. Building work in the 1920s led to the discovery of children's bones and some of these were even tinged with blue. The bones were laid to rest at the local cemetery and brought an end to the appearance of the blue boy. But still to this day, many people who spend their nights at Chillingham still report flashes of blue where the bones were found. Well, here we go, my loves, into the speed build section of Tillinham Castle. Tillinham was occupied from... I found this really cool article that I'm going to read through as the speed build goes on because it would just tell you all about the history, what went on here, dates, the reasons for this castle, etc. I just thought it was really interesting. I think you guys will love it. I really do. So we're going to go and read my sultry voice. Ready? Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Chillingham was occupied from prehistoric times. During the Second World War, an impromptu excavation of the castle grounds by a German prisoner of war uncovering flint or uncovered flint 
and antler arrow, arrowheads and axes dating back to the Bronze Age. These tools may be evidence of a prehistoric hunting camp, or it may have been an early, man early manifestation of war by the, by the Iron Age local tribes. That's absolutely insane to think it goes back to that date. Nuts. By the 1200s, the conflict was increasing along the borderlands between England and Scotland. Monks had built a house on the land below Ross Hill. This monastery was converted into a fortified manor house with just one tower and a curtain wall. The monarchy placed the new castle in the hands of the Grey family, which is one of the bloodline families that still own it to this day. Um, nuts. And this was in 1246. The Greys were descendants of the Croys, kin of William the Conqueror. Wow. Tasked with holding the border around Chillingham, it was they who turned the manor into a fortress, constructing its dungeons, torture chamber and battlements. My God. In 1297, the first Scottish War of Independence broke out. That same year, the forces of William Wallace ra raided Chillingham burning the local women and children alive in a church. That is absolutely awful. However, in 1298, Edward I, the Hammer of the Scots, made Chillingham his base for the campaign against Scotland. Chillingham's dungeon began to fill with enemy prisoners, Scottish women and children, as well as soldiers and spies. Legend says that King Edward personally appointed the man who was to deal with them, John Sage. And we talked about John Sage, like, briefly in the beginning. Um, I hope you don't mind all this speed bill going on. You've got something to watch and to listen to. Very nice indeed. By the way, I use a lot of custom content in this um, from Felix Ander just to get this castle looking similar to it. I couldn't look, make it look exact because Sims, um, it was quite difficult. But I think it's, I think it still looks all right. You'll have to let me know. Anyway, moving on. Where are we? I've lost my place. No, we're here. John Sage. Sage was, a supposedly, was supposedly a soldier who had risen through the ranks to become a lieutenant in Edward's army when a leg injury forced him to retire from combat. He begged the king to find him a role, so Edward had him appointed torturer at Chillingham Castle. Uh, Sage was a sadist and hated the Scots. Over the three years of war, he rep uh, reputedly tortured some 50 prisoners a week. When the war ended, Sage burnt the remaining adult prisoners alive in the grounds of the castle while their children watched from what is known as the Edward Room or Killing Room. Sage later hacked these children to death with an axe displayed in the castle. That is so, that is so disturbing. That is horrible. Can you imagine living like, oh my God, that must have been terrifying. In all... 7,500 Scottish prisoners reputedly died at Chillingham. Their bodies dumped into the lake. John Sage also met his end at Chillingham. One evening, Sage killed his lover, Elizabeth Sh Charlton, strangling her during a sex game on the rack in Chillingham's torture chamber. Yeah, right. I'm sure that was just a game. Unfortunately for Sage, Elizabeth's father was a leader of, a pow of the powerful Border Reavers. Ravers? Outlaw gangs who played the Borderlands but were vital to fight against the Scots. To avoid losing against them, no, but to avoid losing the Ravers to the enemy, Edward I handed Sage over to justice. He was sentenced to hang at Gillingham but was torn apart while he still lived. Others would soon join Sage's ghost and those of his victims. Oh. Well, to be fair, if I saw what went down here and... It was a free for all to get hold of Mr. Sage. I think I would do exactly the same thing. Um, my God, the rage those people must have had against him. Anyway, we're going on to the radiant boy now, which is the blue boy. In 1344, Edward III issued a license to crenellate to, crenellate to Sir Thomas Grey. The license was not a thing awarded lightly by the king, as a fortified castle could be used against the crown as well as fight for it. Allowing the Greys to thoroughly fortify Chillingham. It was called Chillington at one point. I'm reading Chillington, but I don't want to confuse you guys. So I'm just changing it to Chillingham. Um, thoroughly, thoroughly fortified Chillingham was a statement of confidence in their loyalty and in Chillingham's vital role in defending the border region. 
The castle's curtain wall became a quadrangle some 10 feet thick. That is insane. The Greys also added towers and a moat just in time for the Scottish invasion of 1345, led by King David II. Chillingham continued as the guardian of the border regions for the next 200 years, although the Grey family was split in their loyalties during the War of the Roses. The Lord of Chillingham always stood by the crown. This support continued during the Northern Uprising of 1537, known as the Pilgrimage of Grace. By the reign of Elizabeth, Chillingham's role had become more diplomatic. Its Lord Ralph Grey was godson not of only of Lord Burley, Elizabeth I's chief minister, and the, but the Queen herself. Grey helped smooth passage of Scotland's King Jem James the Sixth to the English phone to the English phone to the English throne by acting as a go-between and playing host to the king himself on the journey south to his coronation. Whoa. It was at this time Chillingham began to take on a more comfortable and refined aspect of a, cu a country house. Yet its walls still hid dark secrets. In the 19th century, renovators uncovered the skeletons of a man and a child hidden near a trapdoor to the underground vaults. It was believed they might have been the forgotten victims of a border reaver attack. Was it Ray River? I know I don't know how to say that. I'm so sorry if I'm saying it wrong. I know what it means. I know what it is, but I don't know how to say it. And the renovations revealed a hundred Tudor documents hidden in, in a ward up fireplace. The documents related to James' succession. However, they chime curiously with another find made in the castle's pink room during the 1920s, which is what we went over briefly beforehand. I'm just making it the build look a little bit more dated. It does, it's does it got like moss and stuff over it, and I couldn't really replicate that in The Sims 4, so this was the best that I could do. And it still looked quite nice. I was quite for it, won't lie. Anyway, moving on. The body in the pink room was reputedly dressed in scraps of blue cloth um, and showed evidence of of ha having attempted to scratch his way out of the wall. Whether or not the child died in the exact circumstances described by the legend cannot be known, but his walling up speaks of yet more darks, darks, dark goings on within Chillingham's walls. Oh my God, that is absolutely scary. Imagine how frightened that child must have been. Just to have been like, just walled up. Oh, that must have been so horrible. Oh, Poor little soul. The growing peace in the borderlands during the 17th and 18th centuries completed Chillingham's castle evolution into a country house. Um, Capability Brown designed landscaping gar landscaped gardens. Capability? Is that what the person's called? Capability? Imagine calling a kid capability. <laughs> oh, he's capable. <laughs> he's capable. Does that, anyway designed landscape gardens around the castle in its new east wing. In 1832, the King of France, Louis-Philippe, um, stayed at Chillingham and gifted the owner, of the, the, the owner with garden urns from Versailles. Wow. However, by 1932, the Greys had left the castle as the cost of running Chillingham became too high, like a lot of um, the upper class did in that period. They had to leave these stately homes and, and good. I'm glad that they had to because there were, that's just an even more bigger divide in working class to middle class to upper class. Um, I don't need to get political, but I just wanted to add that in. <laughs> just wanted to add that in. Um, but yeah, Costander became too high, leaving the castle to its ghosts until its rescue at the end of the 20th century. Ghost stories of Chillingham in this gentler period, continue to manifest. One notable sp spirit is the ghost of Lady Mary Berkeley, the wife of Lord Grey of Walk and Chillingham, who in 1682 ran off with his wife's sister, Henrietta. What a shitbag. Lady Mary was left alone, alone in Chillingham with her baby daughter. She died in the castle in 1710, and her ghost reputedly remains there still. Signalled by the rustle of silk and an eerie chill. I've heard stories. I've been watching a few documentaries on this. And it's the sound of fabric. I've experienced that before in a place that I used to live. Um, the sound of fabric. We've spoke about this on stream before. You guys will know. So I kind of believe that. Um, 
But how real are Chillingham's ghosts? American heiress Leonora Van Marta, who married George, Earl of Tankerville, in 1895, certainly seemed to believe in them. The new countess was a keen believer in the spirit world and claimed to experience many of Chillingham's spirits herself, capturing their stories in a pamphlet published in 1925. If I can find that pamphlet, I doubt I'm going to be able to. I'll link it down below because um, I would love to read that. However, Chillingham's reputation as Britain's most haunted castle seems to stem from its current owners. And despite its undoubtedly turbulent history on the borders of, borders of England, some of Chillingham's more bloody tales are difficult to verify. For although much of the castle's history is well documented, the character of John Sage, for instance, is not. But I've also seen, heard that they tried to get rid of the documents about him actually existing as well. So that's their conflict in there. Um, but Chillingham's history is no more horrific and bloodstained than any other castle, castle fortress in England. And we have a lot of castles, <laughs> such as the Tower of London or Warwick Castle. I've been to both of them. I've never been to Chillingham. I'd love to. However, the mysterious finds of bodies in the castle remain as a testimony to the grim goings on. No matter how undocumented, then there are reports and photographs of visitors to the castle and paranormal investigators. There's loads of videos out there on YouTube as well of paranormal investigations that went on in Chillingham. So if you're interested, go and check them out because they are. They're really, really interesting. Um, maybe these are fakes, flukes, or the workings of overworked imaginations. Perhaps. As the 19th century poet Long, Longfellow said of Chillingham, and this is, I've really liked this poem or this quote. It said, In houses in which men have lived and died are haunted houses. Through the open doors, the harmless phantoms on their errands glide with feet that make no sounds upon the floors. So it's almost saying like every house does come of a history. Um, but I disagree with the fact that you can't feel that kind of like presence. And I know people out there are skeptics and stuff. I get it. I completely get your skepticism. But I don't know. I have I just think someone's got to linger on afterwards. It would be weird if it didn't. Anyway, or perhaps there is something to the reputation of Chillingham Castle after all. Well, there you go. Just a little cheeky read through of this place. This place is so old, like so, so old. There's got to be some kind of like, oh, I'd love to go there. I really would. It's definitely on the list. It is on the list of many National Trust houses in the UK that I would love to visit. Maybe I, we could, I could visit this on the way up to Scotland because it is on the border. Might have to keep that in mind next time I'm coming up to Scotland, my loves. But anyway, let's talk about the build a little bit, shall we? So again, as I said, I tried to make this place look as much as we possibly could. Or as much as I possibly could to the actual build itself. It was quite difficult with elevations and stuff. And it was at this point I was just like, right, I'm not going to do the interior. So let's just really concentrate on the exterior and try and get it as good as we possibly can. Um... It would have been better if this was on a 200 by 200 lot, but we don't have them because I would have done all the gardens as well. But we don't. We don't have them. So I ended up using um, this little bit as the garden. <laughs> when the gardens, this place are vast. They are acres and acres of uh, beautiful landscaped gardens. Stunning by my standards. Very beautiful. Very beautiful indeed. Um, but... I still had fun. I still had fun, re like, recreating this. Really did. Has anybody been to any of the, like, stately homes in the UK and experienced anything yourselves? The place I used to live in, in Plymouth. I'll put a link to the place down below. Um, It used to be, like, an old school. Um, It's been several things over the years. Several things over the years. I think even at one point it was a hospital during the war. Um... But it was built in like 1860, I think. I think it was. But that place was horrifyingly haunted. It really, really was. Um, Not to the point where I'm like getting dragged out of bed or anything because I would have moved at that point. But Tom used to be in the Navy, so he was away a lot. So I was always at that house like a lot by myself. And I used to hear stuff. And so did my neighbours. Now... If you're living in a place where there's lots of different apartments and you're all hearing the same weird noises at night, it's 
something telling me that that's a little bit strange, especially when you can hear it like next to you. And I used to hear like cloves, um, almost like someone with a long cloak dragging across the floor. Oh God, it was horrible. And can you imagine being in bed? Oh, it was, it was scary. And we were paying far too much to rent that place out. But I wanted somewhere nice to like be while Tom's away a lot. So I wanted to live in this big old like house that was like renovated into apartments. So that's the reason why we did that. Um, but yeah, it was it was really cool. It was nice to live there. It was a good experience, but I'd never want that again. Thank you. Oh, it's a bit dark, isn't it? I'm trying to get all spooky, aren't I, with the landscaping. We're doing nighttime landscaping, everyone. <laughs> Don't know why I did this, but hey, I think it's because it looks cold. Now, all of the windows are from Felix and um, they didn't fit perfectly with this house. This house is not as elaborate as what I've picked on the windows. Um, a lot of the windows were kind of Georgian-esque, whereas on the castle, they're, they're mainly medley, medieval. Um, but I couldn't find any medieval Max's match CC. So I went with Felix and it. And it still looks nice. I might put this up on the gallery. If there's a few of you out there that want this up on the gallery, then I will. But I'm not really looking to put this up on the gallery as such. I just wanted to kind of use this as our kind of backdrop as we talked about spooky stuff because I love spooky things I really do and I know there's people out there that don't but I do love it love it love these little stair pieces like the little like railing it's a bit of a pain in the ass to place them all but um they're gorgeous and you can put them on one side if you wish so take that sims team <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to do that in sims 5 I'm very very much hoping for it we're into the courtyard anyway the courtyard area was, it is probably one of the most famous areas in Chillingham Castle, um, mainly because of how beautiful it is. It's a lot more elaborate. I think they worked on it a lot more over the years, going through Tudor times, Elizabethan. Um, they got more elaborate, so they added stuff to it and it still got this scary like medieval backdrop to it. You saw the pictures that I put up, so I couldn't really replicate that perfectly. But I still had fun. I still had fun just playing around with this. I love a courtyard. I really do. I would love a courtyard. Wouldn't like a castle. Um, windows are unbalanced, darling. I can see that. Um, yeah, I wouldn't like a castle. I know. Shocking to admit, but I really wouldn't. <laughs> imagine, oh, imagine being home alone in a castle. And then you heard something downstairs. Oh, no, nope, absolutely not. I'd jump out the window. I <laughs> launch myself out the window i'd be gone <laughs> but yeah if you want to furnish this be my guest look at the size of it i was just like i'm not furnishing this i cannot and you know me guys i would usually furnish all of my bigger builds but i was just like nah not in the not in the right way to be furnishing this cannot be dealing with that so i didn't i just left it but this could be such a cool We'll definitely do a castle for the Let's Build because we do need to bring a royal family, I think, into the Let's Build, the worlds, especially in Windenburg. Um, so we'll build maybe on the Von Haunt estate and do a royal family and we'll do a castle up there. But we probably won't be able to do a big castle because that lot's quite small, actually, if I remember rightly. Yeah, no, it is. It's quite small. So I'm just going around and adding in a few more details everywhere with these like beautiful pieces from Felixander that you can just put around the windows and stuff and it just makes it look gorgeous. I absolutely love it. I'm unsure how, how long this is going to go on for, um, this build. So if it does stop abruptly and I'm still talking, that's the reasons why I had to do this because I needed to get my cheeky little face in for you lot, didn't I? I'm going to be live on Twitch tonight as well, guys, by the way. play um, Creating the character for Sims Medieval and also playing a bit more of um, Tell Me Why episode one I don't, I don't think there's much left in it at all but i'm gonna be live 7 p.m bst if you want to be there but anyway we've got that done the exterior's done i'm gonna let you pop you off now and we're just gonna go around and do a little video tour um around chillingham and yeah i'm gonna leave you now my loves goodbye